How's it going everybody? This is Dr. No from the XCore forums and I wanted to show you that there's been even more progress on creating another XMOS uh, dip. Um, this is the board that I showed you in my last video based solely off of Corin's design. Um, it has an XS1-L1. Um, it can be plugged directly into a breadboard. Um, it has a 4 megabit um, flash uh, memory, uh, 25 megahertz uh, clock, and then a couple other components for the power. Um, and that's what the board looks like. So the second version that I've just finished creating um, is right here. Uh, it's, it's similar to, to Korn's design in some ways. However, I've added some features and improved upon the design. The first thing that you'll notice here is that there is a micro USB um, uh, connector. I use, I'm using that for power and I'm using it to connect to, US, uh, to USB. Um, this is the USB 3318 uh, chip here which is connect, uh, connected to the XMOS uh, XSL1 single core processor. Um, this allows anybody who uh, uses this development board to basically plug it in and not have to add any hardware to be able to interface it with um, a USB. Um, the uh, X tag I have here, I created. I had a little bit extra space on my um, PCB run, so I created a breakout board. This is just so I didn't have to run jumpers from my X tag to the correct pins on my um, on my my development board. Um, okay, so I'll get back to the other features, but I wanted to first show you that it works. So if I go ahead and pop up the command prompt and type in xrun-l you see that there is a single core um, device connected so one thing that you'll notice is if you see uh, if you look at the back of the board right here um, we have a little connector and on the bottom of the board um, we have another connector it's a little hard to see um, so if you had more than one of these boards you can basically just lay them on top of each other Oops. lay them on top of each other and uh, connect them up like that so you can go from a single core to a dual core, three core, quad core uh, system depending on what you needed. Just to show you it works, if I go ahead and run xrun-l again it is now, the x tag is now seeing two cores connected to the, uh, the x tag. Okay. So I can go ahead and pull that off. Okay, the first program I can show you is the original uh, LED timer by Corin. Basically, it takes port 8B on the uh, XSL1 and then uh, increments a counter every so often and then outputs it to the ports. You can connect an LED to it um, and actually show an LED counter going up, an 8-bit LED counter. Um, I got a little lazy and I decided to um, not connect the whole bar graph. Instead, I'm just using um, a single LED connected to one of the bits. Here's the program. Um, so we name the port 8B as PLED in the program. We output the, the temporary, which is initialized as uh, 1. We output that onto the 8B port. We increment it, and then once it's been incremented uh, enough, uh, it goes back to 0. Um, and then we wait um, a certain amount of time uh, to increment, the next, uh, increment to the next number. So I can go ahead and flash this program, which will take just a second. Okay. Uh, I believe I have to power cycle it, so I'll just go ahead and uh, pull the USB in and out. Make sure that the power is working. Great. And then I just have to connect it to pin. There we go. And now we have a little LED that flashes. Um, this is, like I said before, this is just one bit of your 8-bit um, counter. I just wanted to show it would work, and you know, I was a little lazy. Okay, so even more interesting, I'm using um, some of the code from GitHub for the USB. Um, the first thing I wanted to show you was the um, US or the, the development board emulating itself as a, a mouse and moving the mouse or moving the cursor 40 pixels to the left, up, down, right in a square. Alright. So 
if I go ahead and open up uh, the USB, the XCore USB folder, I can see here, here's the, the HID um, example code. I haven't changed it much. Basically, I changed the XN file and I changed uh, a couple of the port definitions here, here. Uh, and there may have been a couple of others, but if you have some questions, if you really want to know, just put it down in the comments and I can, I can make sure that's it. Or put your question down in the comments and I'll let you know. Uh, okay, so I can just go ahead and hit the play button and you should hear it connect to USB here in a second. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Now we have a little, um, little board that can actually interface with USB and um, act as an HID device. All right, which is really annoying because I can't stop or start the program or anything, so I just have to go ahead and pull the, the plug out. And it should turn back into the, uh, the counter. Let's see if it does. Yep. Uh, uh, so, because it basically just got all the, got its new program from the, um, the flash memory. And that's why it's back on the, um, the counter. Okay, so I thought even more interesting was the virtual COM port where it basically emulates itself as a serial plug and then you can interface with it through a, um, a serial interface like TerraTerm or something like that. So I can go ahead and open that and again I didn't change the code very much. Um, I did change the, um, the reset port um, and I actually added um, the ability to turn an LED on and off. Originally, you can see here that um, it checked to see if it was a lowercase and it output uh, the uppercase uh, version, A through Z. Um, so I added the ability to put uh, uppercase and it would put it, uh, it would return the lowercase value. Also, if you put a one or a zero, it'll turn the, um, the LED, LED on or off. And the reason I'm reassigning a 0 and a 1 to an L and an O is just so I can debug and make sure that it's correct or it's working, um, which it is. So I can go ahead and hit the run button. Mm -hmm. Oops, wrong one. Okay, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. Alright, VCOM. Let's run as oh, that's what it is. Come up here, run as export application. Go ahead and pick the VCOM. Okay. And there it goes. I can open up my Terra term. All right. So whenever I put uh, uppercase H. It's lowercase. If I put a lowercase h, it's uppercase. The other cool thing is I think I have it connected to 35. Okay, so if I go ahead and connect this to pin 35, and I can input a 1 or a 0, you can see it turning off. 1, 0, 1, 0. So it works. And as you can see, whenever I put a 1 in, it becomes an L. Whenever I put a zero in, it becomes an O. Great, so that is where I'm at on creating an XMOS dip. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, just put them in the comments. Um, from here, uh, I was hoping to start um, working with the XS-S one, I think is the next one that has analog, and that's what I'll be working on next. Uh, since that's not going to come out for a while, I'll be working on a dual core version of this. Then I'll go ahead and open source it and maybe even try to sell a couple. Um, so you have that to look forward to if you are looking for a, a cheap development board. Um, thank you for watching.